because it can be done like that. We're going to do a cylinder. Otherwise, you guys be here for the rest of the time in the semester. where your parameters, what this cast is going to be like at the end of the day. So there's where you're going to add a little extra padding. You will treat tibial plateaus or medial lateral collateral ligaments, meaning MCL or LCL. And when would you do this and not a range of motion brace? Compliance is a big issue. Um, it could be that uh, just fit in general. You know, you guys are now starting to put these range of motion braces on, and do you find that you can make a good fit on some of these things? I don't. I mean, I, I think I know what I'm doing, and I try to fit them the best that I can, but I still see a lot that don't fit well. So just like any cast, I give that proximal border a little bit more extra padding than I would. And then also with the distal border. Now, where's my parameter here? Joint, joint line, exactly. So I want to make sure that my joint line is padded up real nice. And then also down here, it's typically where your short leg cast would be. It's pretty much the same parameter as a short leg cast. Here's your fibular head, two finger rest below. So that's where the other border is going to be. And then cylinder wise, have you guys seen me do a cylinder at work yet? No. Where I put a whole roll of this two inch roll down there? I think that's what you had us do when we did our cylinders, don't we? I think I may have showed it to you. Hi, how are you? Hi, I'm Bella Elliott. And my photographer. Excellent. Come on in. Okay. We're a little bit early, if that's okay. That's fine. Okay. Um, sorry to interrupt your class. I'm with the, the district uh, marketing and communications office. I do mostly uh, PR, marketing, that kind of thing. And so you just want to take to get, pictures of yeah. all of us? Uh, do you want to take pictures of the students rolling, or is it me rolling? or? Uh, the students. The students? Okay. Yeah. So then, it's going to be a little while before they get going. Okay. I'll be doing I'm showing them what to do. Okay. okay. And then. Um, when I'm done, I cut loose and let them go at it. Okay. okay. So, okay. bear with um, me. In the meantime, bit. maybe if I could uh, have you all sign a model release that says you're okay with us using your photo and you're not getting paid. There you go. No. Don't ask. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Most of the time you guys are doing this in plaster, and it's a big giant mess. You guys are lucky, we got some fiberglass here that we can roll. It makes it nice because uh, your grades won't go too far down whenever it comes down to um, the hinges and how well they're sticking in there. Sometimes I can bust you guys on that. With fiberglass, you don't typically have that problem. Although you still have to create that bed that we were talking about. You put a layer of fiberglass down before you can put the hinges in there. So 
So to me, the parameters are going to be your most important thing. I do bend the knee at about 45 degrees when rolling this cast. You don't have to put your uh, tuck your your uh, web roll in it first. And I think just one more roll should cover it. No, I don't, I'm not, I'm not uh, yeah. finishing it okay. because there's a lot to do still. So your, your molds are going to be similar to a PTB except without the patella. You're just going straight femoral condyle. So knowing that that's where my condyle is, I'm going to start to curve it where I want the cast to be. Just right distal to that uh, where my fingers are, that's where your parameter or your joint line is going to be. And if you feel like you want to do the same ones as like a, a patella, or I'm sorry, like a cylinder cast, you can go ahead and do that too because. What happens is these casts want to slide down the leg, especially being a cylinder. Do you need the box in the back? I'm sorry? Do you need the box in the back? No. But I'm being pretty aggressive. Hey, I think the first 10 years that you did this, you never put one of these things on. You always were thinking to yourself, why do we, why does Chris keep showing us? And then boom, he calls me up, dude, I had to do one. <laughs> and then I think you've probably done two or three since, haven't you? I've probably done two, I think, yeah. since then. I think three total. Never use a jig though. Don't have them. Yeah, a lot of places don't have the jig anymore. At Kaiser, we still have the jig which is what you're going to get familiar with, is the reason why I show this cat. So we've got one functional jig? Today. One functional jig, but none of our hinges, most of the hinges, I'm going to show it both ways. Alright. Because they can move quicker without the hinges, and we got enough fiberglass to do it all fiberglass, so that should make it quicker too. Cool. And we got our first nap for the night. Say that again? The first nap. Oh. Can I fall out? Put the TA around there. are going to be a, right below my mold, above my patella, below my molds, I mean I'm sorry, just distal to my molds, and I got to get it enough to where they can bend the knee. So curve it back towards the body yep. underneath. So if you look at the way the condyles are made on the skeleton, that's what we're trying to duplicate. Follow it. And then right around in here is going to be the short leg cast. It's just straight circumferential.
one thing I do do. We leave a little strand attached, and that way we don't get that same problem that we do with the uh, how we marked it. We leave that attached that way they don't rotate on you. And before I actually make my cut, I bend my hinges to where I want them. So my hinge is just going to be distal to that. Look at the contour. Just a few quick little bends and boom, I've contoured that pretty darn good to the knee. That's what you guys need to be doing for your, uh, this one's going to be a little trickier. Should have started down below. So I like that. Look at that nice contour that I get with that hinge. Got it? Very little gapping between the two. I could put a piece of a roll of fiberglass in there and it'll probably creep right up to the metal. I'm liking that. Let's go to the next one. Not shabby. So I'm liking this the way that's contouring. It even contours with my mold. And the nice thing about the hinge jig is it holds your hinge for you while you dial the whole thing in. Now this hinge jig is dated. Most people don't use them anymore. In fact, that might fall out. This one will stay in. And we only have one of these, so I'm going to show you using the other hinges as well, which is probably what you're going to use because I can't even find these hinges anymore for me to buy. Those ones there are very similar to what you would get off a range of motion brace, which is what you're going to use, if that makes sense. We have tape, right, Mike? So in theory, this hinge should screw on there, and I think the things are the thing is uh, stripped.
range of motion braces took the place of these. That's why those aren't used as much anymore. Exactly why these aren't used as much. Uh -huh. But again, and we do have um, bending irons to help you guys bend them. Now, do you see how long it took me to bend that hinge? The majority of your class tonight will be bending those hinges. They will fight you. And I'm only doing this just because this hinge jig is kind of messed up. And then you can kind of see what this jig does. This will rest right on the patella. You can slide these in nice. to where that will fit and it will hold it for you. And that's the whole purpose of the jig, okay? What you guys are most likely going to use are these hinges. And these have already been pre-bent from former classes. So you're going to have to really get in there and do the exact same thing I just did again. And that did not take that long. And so this wants to line up right with the... You're, I'm gonna show you right in the center of that hinge is gonna go right in the center of the uh, joint line, which is gonna be just distal to your cut. Okay. And I like that as well. So what you should do here, you want to draw these out, okay? You want to make sure that if the bend is at 45 degrees, this should tell you or get you pretty close where you're at. And I'm guessing I'm around 45 degrees, so I want to make sure that my hinge is bent with that. And I like the way that looks right there. I'll go to this side, do the exact same thing. Got my marking pen. Now remember, when you draw this, technically you're not going to be able to see it because you have to put fiberglass down, right? <laughs> so I'm looking for, I'm trying to make sure I mark every little thing that I can see. Because when I put that layer of fiberglass down, it's going to make it really tricky to see where everything lines up. And you're going to do it one at a time. And if you use colored fiberglass, which is what I grab, <laughs> you're really going to hose yourself. You want to grab me a uh, non-colored? Perfect. Hmm. Both struts at the same time, huh? Or both oh, you know what? I forgot to cut it. Watch that water. Okay, I want you to get that water out of there. So I'm still going to keep this in place even though I'm not using the hinge jig.
Did you leave a line in the back too? Oh, that's line in the back too. That way you don't get that rotation. You could still get a little bit of a bend. Here I'll start my and double check to make sure that your joint line is lining up. Got it? So just put your hand in there, make sure you're right on the joint line, and you should be where the edge of that cast is, right on the joint line. So I'm going to do my money roll at the same time. So I got my one layer down. It's tough. It ain't easy. <laughs> and tight. You can roll this super tight, that way it'll stay better for you. You're only doing half the cast at, one, at a time. Mm -hmm. What about for people who have smaller hands? Text, you know? Like some Maybe you can ask for a hand to help hold it. Yeah. Mike, what do you do? I'd probably tape it. Tape it? Oh, yeah. Option. I think about that. <clears throat> See how most, I was pulling the tension on that too? And then the other thing I'm going to do is come through here and make sure that I mold all the way around that thing. Now this is where the meat and potatoes are right here where the, where the little plastic piece was because that's going to really bond really well with the fiberglass. Plus, you're still going to go back and do even a little bit more because you have to tuck that yeah. that uh, web roll or the uh, stocking that in. So now I'm going to focus more on this side. It's it gets enough. a little bit tricky because I already have to now bend the hinges out of the way. Notice is the cast has slid down a little bit already. So by pushing the hinges up, I push the cast back up. And again, if you were doing a long leg, you wouldn't have that problem. But because we did a cylinder, we have that problem. Because my marks were down here. Once this is dry, then I can go ahead and cut those two pieces out. 
pull back the rest of my stock in that. Most people go with these hinges anyhow, and they've been doing it for a while. Um, and the reason is because you can, most of the time, a tibial plateau is going to be 0 to 30 degrees at first, and you can dial that in instead of changing the cast every single time. Get too crazy pulling your web roll out. Gotta have a border. You should be able to slide your stock in that somewhat in there. Or if you're that good, to where you bent your hinges at, well, you won't. How you impress your dock right there? Pull one of those off. I'll trust you with just about anything. I hadn't done one of those in 10 years. What I do when I have to do it, pull down my book. <laughs> 10 years I had that book in my drawer. Do a lot of doctors know about this? They all know about it. Yeah. And what even, what, what's even better? is if they don't, which they most of them do, they won't hint around to say, hey, I want a cast break. They'll come and ask you, hey, I got this guy who's got a tibial plateau fracture, and I'd like to put him in a range of motion brace, but we can't. What do you suggest? And don't go, well, I, there's nothing I can do. Because <laughs> that's not the right thing. <laughs> So that's what a lot of a lot of technicians I work with will say that. Ooh, you know what? You should go talk to Chris. <laughs> they all know what to do. I, I put a range of motion brace on, and I've actually wrapped fiberglass around it, around the part where they take it off, so they can't take it off. You know, they have giant zip ties that can go all the way around the leg too, just for that reason. I'm just 
So again, this is just for looks right here. I do want to contour with the cast. should be able to bend the next time. Beautiful, nice work. So the Any questions? A little bit of touching underneath. A little bit of what? A little touching on the back on the posterior sides, okay? Oh yeah, I mean you're gonna it depends on the size of the leg. You want them to at least get to ninety. Okay. 120 would be ideal. If I wanted to get her more, what can I do? Trim out more? Trim out a little bit more around mm -hmm. the, the wet side. You can go both sides, really. You can just kind of angle them down, but that's really what's preventing it. To me, I felt it was a little harder doing it that way than with the jig. Really? I mean, if you got a jig handy, but where do you find these things anymore? Yeah, we have them, but... You guys got them? We have. We actually have the jig. But I we don't have any hinges. I don't know where to, to start. I'll have to Google and find out. If I could find the hinges, that would be ideal. It's few and far between that those get done. Yeah. I've, I've actually found rolling it at 45 degrees when they're standing up mm -hmm. because right now all of that adipose is all shifted that way. So they stand up and that's the but fall. Do you do them in cylinders or long legs? I'll do it in a cylinder just like what you're doing. I would do it in a long leg. Yeah. Have you ever that tried rolling it in two parts? Yeah. Mm -hmm. If I was doing a long leg I would. Yeah. If I was doing a long leg. Any questions? Medial lateral tibial plateaus, MCL injuries. Normally you put the foot in, but you can't.